everyone. My name is Kanal Batra. I am a senior technical evangelist at AWS. I'm joined by uh, my colleague Robert Tzu, who's a principal technical evangelist here, and Santosh and Lijo from our service quota team. Um, so let's get started with the session. Uh, Santosh, why don't you start us off by talking a little bit about what is service quotas and uh, uh, what, you know, define it and let's know more service. Sure, uh, so service quotas is a new AWS feature that we've launched uh, that essentially helps customers uh, view and manage all their service quotas for their different AWS services in one central location. Um, so it's, it's something that our customers have always been asking for, uh, given that they have to go to multiple different places to manage the service limits, and we've sort of solved that problem by launching this, uh, this new feature. So service quotas were initially service limits, right? Right. Okay, so for everyone watching at home who are looking through our documentation, this is something service limits now known will be, will be known as service quotas, yeah. correct? Yeah, so um, we are moving away from the term service limits towards service quotas. Uh, because we believe that you know the, the term better represents our philosophy of giving more control to customers. Um, so over time, we'll be transitioning over to service quotas, but you might still fun, find some services using the word limits. Can you give us an example of <coughs> maybe something that is only now possible after the launch of this feature that was maybe either not possible before or was error prone or took a lot of time and manual effort? Um, so everything that their customers used to do before um, is, is, is possible, but with less effort, and it's more convenient. For example, uh, previously, if you had to go and check what your limits are for, say, Lambda, you had to go to the Lambda-specific documentation page and go and search for the, for the quota that was relevant to you, and then request for a limit increase through Support Center. So now you just have to go to Service Quotas, simply look for the relevant quota under, under the service, uh, AWS Lambda, and, and as simple as entering the new limit and entering submit, uh, it would just sort of, you know, uh, it, uh, submit the request on your behalf. So it just really simplifies and centralizes all the stuff that you otherwise would have to go to multiple places previously in the past. Mm -hmm. But after the, the request is submitted, the workflow from then on is the same as though you had gone through the specific product page, right? Yes, uh, largely. So um, most, most requests um, end up at the uh, support center for uh, support, support associates to sort of uh, you know, approve the request. But one of the other advantages of service quotas is that it allows service teams to create these new rules that automate the resolution of these, of these uh, requests that customers put through, which means that customers also will benefit from lower waiting times to have their quotas approved. So how do customers access the service quotas? I'm guessing there's a console page where they can go to to see all these quotas aggregated into one dashboard? Yes, so customers can either access service quotas through the AWS management console. Uh, if they're more familiar with the AWS uh, SDK and, SLI, uh, and CLI, they can just use that. So it's quite convenient for customers to discover this feature. Now this can also be done programmatically as well, right? Yes, so it allows okay. customers to manage all their quotas programmatically through the APIs. And this wasn't something that was possible before this feature, right? Yes, this yes, that's right. Okay, so this opens up to new workflows where yeah. now you can use automation, which is one of the themes that we're discussing here at reInvent. That's correct, yes. Yeah. And another, another one of the themes that we have at the conference here today seems to be consolidation. Um, you know, it seems that the problem that a lot of people who move to AWS have is they have all these resources, all these capabilities at their disposal, and they're on demand, so they just go wild. And, and that's great, right? What we actually want is for, uh, to have tools that are powerful enough to unleash your imagination and your that's creativity. Right. But then we have to strike a balance by making sure that those things can be operated in a safe and secure way. Right. Um, and what we've seen with services like, like Service Hub um, and this feature, uh, Service Quotas, um, is kind of a way to, to get a operational overview of everything, make sure things have a consistent way of, of being handled. That's right. So um, we want customers to be proactive about how they manage their workloads, and um, we don't want to be surprised by any sort of event that could you know, impact when they're trying to deploy an application, for example. The last thing you want is for them to discover a limit that they didn't know about. Um, so service quotas allows customers to sort of proactively take control of their, um, of their quotas by, like I said, centralizing all of these inf all of this information in one place um, for them to go and you know sort of manage uh, at, at one place. So could you go over more of the benefits? So we know it's now you can do more workflows by it's being programmatic. It has an API. Uh, there's now it's all aggregated in dashboard. What are some of the other benefits of 
Sure. So um, I'll just go through the through the benefits one by one. One is the fact that you just need to go to one simple one single place, like Kunal was mentioning, to manage your quotas. Uh, the second thing is that it gives just gives you greater visibility about all the quotas that that are relevant to you. Um, that it just helps you sort of you know plan your workloads uh, and and your your operations better. Um, the third thing is that it's the process of actually requesting for a quota increase is significantly easier. Uh, you just go in and and and, and enter your new quota increase. Um, and then it, it, it sort of, you know, it, 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 uh, it gets done. Um, the other benefits are the fact that uh, it allows for proactive management of quotas um, using CloudWatch alarms. So you can actually set a, a quota threshold saying that please inform me when my you know, concurrent executions for AWS Lambda reach 80% of my threshold. And so you get automatically alerted, and then you can take any action just such as, you know, requesting for a limit increase or going and seeing if there's something that you need to do on your end. Right. Um, finally, if you're a customer of AWS organizations, um, it, Service Quotas allows you to automatically request for quotas for new accounts that you create in organizations. Uh, which means that you spend less time doing that setup initially, also gives you a really consistent way of configuring new accounts that you set up in, in AWS organizations. Now I know you guys have a demo uh, available to show us. Can you walk through the demo and give us maybe an example of how a customer would use service quotas? Absolutely, so I'm just going to hand it over to uh, Lee Joe, who is the, the senior PM on service quotas, to walk you through how, how this works. Cool, uh, thanks Santosh. So I'll take the next couple of minutes to um, take you guys through uh, key flows and um, a demo of the, of the service. Um, what you see right now on your screen is, is the dashboard. Um, that's pretty much where you land when you, uh, when you hit our URL. Um, this is an easy way to kind of um, get an overview of, of the service. Um, you have a couple of services listed here. Uh, you can modify these cards to um, you know, bring in your favorite services. Uh, so I can probably remove something, I can add something and say that, you know, these are the ones I need to have an overview about. It's more like a quick reference. Um, you can also see your uh, pending uh, quota requests, your recently resolved quota requests, et cetera, here. What I'll do right now is I'll just take you through a use case. Um, let's assume that um, I'm using something like um, you know, Lambda um, in, 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 in my everyday world. So all I need to do is either I, I go to my dashboard and search for it, or I can search for it here. I go to my uh, Lambda page. This is my quota list page for AWS Lambda. I can see all my um, quotas here. Um, I can see the default values. I can see whether this quota is adjustable or not. Um, if it's adjustable, then I can go ahead and raise uh, a quota increase request. If it is not adjustable, then I won't be able to do that. Um, I'll give you an example. Say, for instance, um, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about my concurrent executions. Um, I'll probably go inside and I can see more details about um, concurrent executions of Lambda functions that I have. Um, I can see what that uh, specific quota is all about. Um, I can see the on information. Um, when it's available, I can also see the um, applied quota value. Um, and as Santosh mentioned, um, there is this whole feature around usage and the capable to set up CloudWatch alarms. Um, so here I can see that my usage is, you know, I have around uh, two concurrent executions of Lambda that's happening. Um, if I'm a little bit uh, concerned about it and I, I, I expect usage to go um, or in increase over the period of time, I can go ahead and uh, create a CloudWatch alarm. Now I'm getting into the world of proactively managing my quotas. Uh, so what I do is I go, uh, go here and I say that, hey, when my um, usage is 80% of my um, uh, quota, then um, alert me, you can definitely give a better, better name for your alarm. Uh, and I create it. So what has happened right now is it has is, it is created a, a CloudWatch alarm. I'll need to go here to the, my um, CloudWatch console and set up notifications for it. Uh, but pretty much once you do that, you are set with um, you know, a, a proactive way of managing your quotas. Uh, the whole idea here is that um, you know, for supported services where there's usage available, you set up CloudWatch alarms. And um, you you get into a world where uh, you proactively managing your, um, your your quota. So when you reach your uh, when you, uh, when your alarm triggers, when you reach a threshold, uh, you can decide either to request for a quota increase or or you can decide um, to do some action at your your end. And also requesting for a quota increase is is pretty simple, as Santos was mentioning. Um, so if I go to an example where um, I need to request. Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, 
So here um, I can see my usage, my, my actual applied value against this particular account is 35, while the AWS default quota is uh, 30. This means that in the past I've requested for a limit uh, for a quota increase, and I've got it approved, and it 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 this new value is updated here. I can if if I again re if, uh, find that my usage is increasing, and I'll probably hit that quota value as well. Uh, I can go ahead and request for a quota increase. So you mentioned this. Uh when you do request a quota increase, what's actually happening in the background? Yeah, so um, when I click on this, one of two things happen. So say for instance, I go ahead and I say that I need 40 right now, and I request, one of two things happen. One, it goes and checks if, if a rule is configured for that particular um, quota in the system. If there's a rule configured, then the resolution, the, the order approval or denial is, is quick, um, and it happens rule-based. If it's not, then it cuts a support case. Um, and once the support case, I'll, I'll so this particular example, I think uh, a rule is written, so probably won't see that. Yeah, so this was um, you know, approved close to instantaneously because we had rules configured. Um, for um, you know, other quotas where uh, a support case is triggered, then you can see your support center case number here. Uh, you can click through that, uh, go to the support dashboard, and continue your correspondence with um, you know, the support team uh, in terms of resolution. Um, all of these actions that I've, uh, I've, I've shown right now um, can, be done through pro can be done programmatically as well. You can use the um, APIs or, or the CL experience to do that. Um, that's, that's, that's the key functionality that we have at an account um, region level. Um, you can view, your, view all your um, different services, their quota information at one single location. Um, you, can, uh, you can see details around uh, your specific accounts and your um, you know, quota values. Um, so um, this coverage is, you know, you'll, you'll see more and more services added um, to this list as we go along. Uh, there's an ongoing process. Um, you can also, as I mentioned, request for a quota increase. You can come to your quota increase uh, or quota request history page, and you can see um, all the quota increases, all, all, all the quota requests you have um, requested for in the past. Uh, and you can also see their status is approved, is open, it's closed, et cetera. Um, another feature is, um, uh, that was mentioned was around the whole organizations, AWS organizations integration. Um, so all you need to do is um, you need to log in as the master account of the org and um, you know go to uh, the North Virginia region, and you can see a quota request template. So what this does is um, it helps you automate the process where um, in the past when you create a new account, in many cases, customers knew that because of their workloads, um, the existing default quotas won't suffice. So they, what they do is they normally go ahead and ask for quota increase requests manually. Uh, this process is automated with this template. So all you need to do is you go, you go in here to your master account um, and you configure your template. You just need to say that for this particular region, uh, for this particular service, Uh, for this particular um, you know, quota, this is my desired value. And I can search for quotas. I can select a few. And I can put in a value. And you can populate this template. And once you associate this template, what essentially happens is the next time you create a new account through AWS organizations, this template will kick in and will request quota increase requests on your behalf. Uh, so you don't have to do, go through the whole manual process where you individually request for specific quota increases. And when you go to your new account, um, and uh, you, can, you can go to the quota request history page, and you can see the status of those quotas uh, that you have requested in the new account. So this makes the whole process of setting up your new account much more simpler. It ensures that um, it's consistent with your whole uh, configuration and um, helps you scale uh, pretty fast. Um, yeah, these are pretty much the key, key capabilities that we have at this point. Um, as we go along, we'll be adding more services, more quotas, um, more information about usage, um, and, 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 um, uh, and also you know, enhancing uh, the features that we have. Nice. So at launch, how many services right now do we support with? So uh, we have over 90 services that we are supporting at launch. OK. Yeah. Very cool. And is this something that I need to pay for separately from 
using the other services? No, so Service Quotas is free of charge. The, um, if you happen to set up CloudWatch, CloudWatch alarms to alert you for uh, thresholds, that's the uh, only incremental cost that you need to pay, but that's according to standard CloudWatch pricing. I think free is a reasonable price. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not yep. bad. <laughs> uh, what regions are this available in right now? So it's, it's currently available in 16 commercial regions. Um, uh, the, towards the end of the year, we're going to try and expand to some of the more, uh, you know, the other regions that we don't have right now, including Gulf Cloud and China and some of these other regions. Thanks. Thanks. And where can customers go if they want to learn more about service quotas? So there's, there's a new blog that uh, Ligio has written as part of the management tools uh, blog, so you should check it out and learn about uh, service quotas there. There's also, a sub, there's also a user guide on how to use the console. Uh, that's a great place to, uh, to learn more in the documentation, so those are the two places that, that customers can go. Can you also give our viewers who are watching right now uh, any hints on what new features might be coming out with service quotas? Sure. Um, amongst the two major areas that are going to be, we're going to be investing in post-GA, we want to cover as many services as possible, as, as Lijo mentioned. We want to make sure that apart from uh, resource-based quotas, we also cover some of the other type of quotas, including API or, th or throttle quotas. That's, that's one major area we're going to invest in. The second major area is we want uh, deeper integration with AWS organizations because we know customers want the ability to manage their service quotas across multiple accounts at the same time. So the ability, for example, to copy uh, quotas from one account in their organization and apply it automatically to the other one um, is, is a common request that we've heard from customers. Um, and also some sort of dashboard that gives them a view of all the statuses for their quotas uh, uh, in their organization. Um, is another feature that we've, we've commonly come across. So deeper integration with organizations is the other major area that we will be investing in, in uh, later this year. Awesome. Uh, any final questions, Rob? No, that's it. That sounds like an awesome feature, and uh, definitely go check it out. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.